This is a small 110 volt Dayton squirrel cage blower. This will deliver 50 cubic foot a minute with no resistance. That means no back pressure and no resistance on the suction side. These do not have a flange on the suction side. They're generally expected to be drawing free air. So I need to get this connected to the top of the hot box. Took some plywood and cut slots in it so it would bend around here. And I'm holding it in position. I glued a bulkhead in here to hold the two ends together. Now that's being glued to this piece. Once that glue dries, I'll sand that to shape, install a hole here, and figure out where that needs to be on top of the hot box. The glue has dried. Bit of a strange shape on that. And so is the housing on the blower. This is a little more flexible than I would like. I've glued some two inch long standoffs in there and there will be a bulkhead that gets glued in there and that will stiffen that up nicely. And that bulkhead does not restrict the suction on the blower at all. piece of pipe is cemented into the lid with construction adhesive. This fits down on top of there. For the motor, I made the attachment flange in this transition piece. This has been belled outwards so it doesn't interfere with airflow. And this will transition into this heater box. I made a couple of flanges to use one of the existing 90s. Two heating elements will sit here, and that's a very smooth transition into this piece of pipe. This piece of pipe is cemented into the lid, and that's just to keep the heat away from the styrofoam. The lid and the box have been given two coats of latex paint, and then two coats water-based polycrylic. It gives a nice hard surface to that latex paint. And this is a lot easier to keep clean and brush the dust off. One thing I haven't talked about is the plate that I removed from the suction side of this blower. If this blower is used on a wood burning stove, this is a method of blocking the intake to the blower to control how much air is going into the furnace. The second heating element arrived, been installed in this piece. That will sit here. Originally I had intended to glue these down and left those areas unpainted. The back will be held down with two screws. And while this is attached to this part with silicone, I'm just going to put a couple of screws through this into the plastic to hold it in place. And I can always take it apart if I need to. I have the temperature controller and two switches to put in a control box. The power cord will come off of here. When this unit is plugged in, the blower will run at all times. And the switches are there to select one or both heaters or none. This is the glue up for the control box. I gave the inside of this two coats of that polycrylic just to seal the wood. That's sealed just in case anything gets spilled on it. Most material does not like sticking to polyurethane. As soon as you plug it in, the motor starts, temperature controller comes on, and currently both of the heating elements are turned off. Down is off, up is on. Kind of cool in the shop today. We start off about 65 degrees, 64. I've turned on one heating element. And we can see the temperature is coming up. Turn on the second element. And that temperature will come up a lot faster. The squirrel cage blower is pretty quiet. 
We're just going to let this run and see how long it takes to climb to 150 degrees. We need to remember we're not heating just the air that's in the box. We have to heat the box itself and any contents that are in the box. It raised the temperature 40 degrees in three and a half minutes. It took a little over 17 and a half minutes to go from room temperature 64 or 65 degrees up to 150 degrees and that's using both elements. Getting this to wake up so you can change the temperature sometimes is a bit of a problem. I'm going to reset this for 194 degrees. Now we'll see how long it takes to get from 150 to 194 degrees. It took 38 minutes to go from 150 to 194 degrees. That's pushing the limits of this hot box to an extreme. I may have an occasion to use this for stabilizing resin. Stabilizing resin wants to be about 200 degrees for 30 to 60 minutes. I think 194 is close enough. I don't use that material very often. It's probably not a good idea to be doing that in your kitchen oven. My temperature probe just sticks inside here. I drilled a hole through the plastic pipe and that's sitting in the return airstream. The blower, the motor is staying cool. This housing gets pretty hot. Most of the heat loss is through this thin plywood, the metal housing for the squirrel cage blower, and this plastic. No more than what this is going to be used. I'm happy with that. Having everything here self-contained in the lid including the temperature probe, when I pick that up, everything's out of the way. You can make a hot box like this by putting light bulbs inside here. In my opinion, the heat distribution on that's not very good. It's easy to break a light bulb when you're putting larger objects in the box, and the box has to be that much larger to be able to clear the light bulbs with larger objects. There were a couple of reasons for building this my shop in the wintertime is only heated to 62, 65 degrees and that's really too cool for these two-part chemicals to react and cure properly. I can put the chemicals in here and set the temperature for 95 or 100 degrees, preheat those chemicals, and then mix them, put them in the pressure pot, put the pressure pot in here, and then the, the resin castings that should cure okay. I haven't had too much problem with the silicone, but the resin, it wants to be warmer to cure properly. And then when you're done, you can put your silicone molds or your resin castings in here and do a post-cure, which is 150 degrees for four hours. Making a heater assembly out of wood, I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just showing you what I've done. With the PTC heating elements, they are not supposed to overheat. Again, you've got to consider where it was made. I've had no indication. I haven't smelled anything. Taking this up to 194 degrees, I haven't smelled anything other than the wood and the paint curing out, I would not recommend leaving this unattended while it's running.